We begin in Plateau State where the police has confirmed the arrest of 17 suspects in connection with the Christmas Eve attacks in Bokos and Barikiladi local government areas, as well as the recent violent attacks in Mungu local government area of the state. Parading the suspects at the headquarters of the State Police Command in Jos, DSP Alabo Alfred stated that nine of the suspects were arrested in connection to the Mungu violence, while the eight others were arrested and are in police custody for their role in the Bokos and Barikiladi attacks. The police has not yet revealed the identity of the suspects. The DSP says the police also has foiled an attack on Tam community and STC company, both in Mungu local government areas. A little earlier, Sagir Ibrahim spoke to our correspondent in Jos, the Plateau State capital, Adu Musa, who gave an update on the recent development. Well, according to uh, the uh, spokesperson of the uh, uh, police command, that uh, the arrest of the suspects uh, follow uh, a kind of effort uh, made by uh, police that is deployed to uh, Bokos and Mongol local government areas. You see, uh, it is the effort that uh, the police made uh, in their patrol that they were able to arrest this uh, suspect. He also said that uh, this suspect we arrested, uh, we arrested with uh, some exhibits such as uh, matches uh catapults and knives so this is the explanation he gave with regard to how the suspect were arrested what news do we have with regards to the quite recent one um, that happened which we spoke about still last night on the news hour yeah well uh from what we have gathered this morning and uh to some uh minutes that is before the uh news uh a lot of uh residents of uh, mongu at the moment uh they are, they are they are very happy with the situation because they see they have seen uh, a good number of uh, uh police personnel as well as uh, uh soldiers and they say that uh, is really giving them confidence to at least come out and uh, do one or two things because uh probably uh, many of them are, have remained Hindu because of uh, the situation they found themselves so honestly the the people of uh, mongu uh, at the moment are happy with uh, the deployment of the security personnel and they say normalcy is gradually returning because the presence of the security they are seeing is giving them a kind of confidence that uh, nothing uh, will happen. Okay, Ado, the um, spokesperson also mentioned that they foiled an attempt by some arsonists in Panyam district to set fire on some worship centers. The statement also added that the police were also able to foil an attack um, on the Intam community as well as the ASTC company, both in Mongo local government. Bearing in mind that Mongo has been bearing a lot of, you know, the heat in the last few days. Were there any explanation as to how this happened and how the police were able to foil these attacks and prevent um, these issues from happening? Well, he, he did not go further to explain to us that uh, why and how these people were arrested. He only told us that, okay, these uh, people were arrested in their attempt uh, to burn some uh, religious uh, center. And if you could recall, even from the explanation he gave, uh, that only nine out of the 17 suspects were arrested from Mongu. So he has not uh, gone further to give us uh, why or and how these people uh, were arrested, apart from uh, what he said. Adul Musa there speaking on developments in Plateau State a little earlier with Sagir Ibrahim. Now the Nigerian military says herder militia, cattle rustling and a combination of other factors are responsible for the violent clashes in Mongu local government era of Plateau State. The Director of Defense Media Operations and Defe Defense Media Operations Major General Edward Buba stated this on Thursday while addressing news conference in Abuja on the activities of the armed forces in Plateau State. Buba said special forces have been deployed to hotspots in the state to contain the situation. General Buba added that the defense headquarters would meet with the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria in the local government over his recent comment accusing the military of supervising the killings of Christians and the destruction of properties in Mongu.
Over 30 persons were killed while several others were injured and many houses burnt when assailants attacked Kwahalas Lake village in the community of Mongu local government area. Now, two other communities on the borders of Mongu and Barikiladi local government areas were also attacked in the recent development. Staying with security matters, troops of 6th Brigade of the Nigerian Army deployed in Karim Lamido local government area of Taraba State on Wednesday neutralized three bandits and recovered weapons and cache of ammunition. The troops also recovered two AK-47 rifles, a motorcycle used by the criminals, and a cache of 40 rounds of 7.62 millimeter special ammunition. It was also further stated that the operation took place in Chibili village, where the 6th Brigade troops, acting on actionable intelligence, conducted a precision strike against the criminals. Meanwhile, the commander, 6th Brigade, Nigerian Army, Brigadier General Kingsley Ua commended the troops for their bravery and efficiency in executing the operation. He emphasized the military's determination to read the state of criminal elements and ensure the safety and well-being of the local population. Away from security matters, the Ondo State House of Assembly has screened and ratified a former deputy clerk of the National Assembly, Olaide Adelami, as the deputy governor of the state. At Thursday's plenary presided over by the Speaker of the House of, Asse of Assembly, Olamide Oladiji, the Clerk of the House, Benjamin Jaeloa Jaeola, read the nomination letter written to the House by Governor Loki Aidatiwa on Wednesday. Submitting the report of the screening committee, the Deputy Speaker, Bayomi, uh, noted that Adelami has been confirmed to be a man of reputable character who is well exposed and is physically as well as mentally fit for the position. In his response, the, nominate, the nominee Adelami thanked Governor Aida Tiwa for allowing him to serve the state, emphasizing that his appointment was a call to duty while promising to work for the development of Ondo State and the country at large. He also promised that he would promote a harmonious relationship between the state executive council and the, or rather the state executive arm and the legislature. The Speaker of the House, on his part, pledged that the legislature would give the executive the support needed at all times, adding that with the confirmation of Adelami as a deputy governor, the stage has been set for the rapid development of Ondo State. The Supreme Court has affirmed the elections of Governor Siminalai Fubara of River State, Ahmed Ali of Sokoto State, and Kefas Agbu of Taraba State. A unanimous verdict of the five-member panel of justices read by Justice Ibrahim Saulawa on Thursday dismissed the appeal by the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress in River State, Tonya Cole, for lack of merit. The judgment on the Taraba State appeal read by Justice Muhammad Lawal Garba also dismissed the appeal by the New Nigeria People's Party and its candidate, Yahya Sani, for filing an incomplete record of appeal. The Apex, the Apex Court also delivering judgment on the Sokoto State appeal, dismissed the appeal of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its governorship candidate, Saidu Umar, in the judgment read by Justice Tijani Abu Bakr. The panel upheld the verdict of the Court of Appeal in Abuja, which had earlier ruled that the PDP failed to establish the allegations of widespread irregularities and non-compliance with the Electoral Act of 2022. Staying with developments in the courts, Justice Bolaji Olajuwon of the Federal High Court in Abuja on Thursday ordered that the five Port Harcourt-based men arraigned by the federal government on terrorism charges be remanded at the Kruje prison facility in Abuja. The suspects are to remain in prison custody till February 2nd when their respective bail applications would be determined by the court. Now the five defendants in the seven count charge, the defendants were accused of alleged terrorism offenses by invading 
vandalizing and burning down the River State House of Assembly complex in the wake of political crisis that rocked the state in October last year. The crisis followed the face-off between Governor Simulanai Fubara and his predecessor, Nyesom Wiki. Besides allegedly burning down the State House of Assembly complex, the suspects were also accused of killing a superintendent of police, Bako Agbashim, and five other informants at Ahuada community of River State. However, when the charges were read, charges against them were read in court, the suspects all pleaded not guilty. Now, ahead of the governorship primary election slated for February in Edo State, major political parties and their aspirants are putting in their are putting in their efforts and gearing up for a heated political campaign. Now, political stakeholders have also called on the leadership of political parties to conduct free, fair and credible primaries in order to engender democratic principles. Jonathan Awanyai has more. As political parties in Edo State prepare for primaries slated for February, amid candidates jostling for patronage, stakeholders have called on the various party leadership to ensure a transparent primary ahead of the 2024 election. Ogbo Lloyd Kelly, the state chairman of the Labour Party, in an interview with Trust TV said no fewer than 30 aspirants are positioning themselves to get a ticket of the party. We have about 31 of them and uh, we look forward to see how much we can uh, uh, felicitate with ourselves and see how we can arrive at the manageable size of uh, the number we have. We are looking at bringing the uh, aspirants together, discussing with them because they are already members of the party. So we must sit together, discuss our issues and find a way around it. So the first step is to ensure that the aspirants are fully engaged, they are reaching themselves, they are discussing. So at the end of the day, uh, we will get to be able to summarize on something. That is the step we have taken so far. Aspirants said that they are looking forward to a process that will be transparent as democracy is based on popular participation. The indirect primaries for me is something that I think that, um, you know, it's a good thing because you are able to talk to the delegates. And I believe that the delegates know where it hurts. They know exactly what the issues are. And I believe that having been through the 18 local governments, I have four small opinion. I have told them that all they need is to give a woman a chance. And I believe that that hope, that aspiration, that dream of a door okay. will be achievable. We are prepared for the forthcoming membership election. And uh, of course, we can see that we are set. So that is what I tell you for now. Secoders believe that a free and fair primary will ensure justice, equity, and peace among delegates and party members. Jonathan Awai, Trust TV News, Bini City. You're watching the news update on Trust TV, still to come. Insecurity militating against education development in Nigeria. More on this and many other stories coming up ahead after the break. And we're back. Thank you very much for staying with us. Let's take another look at the top stories. Police have arrested sus suspects in connection with Bokos, Barikiladi and Mongu attacks in Plateau State. The Ondo State House of Assembly has confirmed Adelami as Deputy Governor. Now, the President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Joe Ajero, has described Nigerian masses as the losers in the grand scheme of things going by the current economic climate in Nigeria. Comrade Ajero made the remarks at the 21st Daily Trust Dialogue with the theme, Tinubu's Economic Reforms, Gainers and Losers. According to the NLC president, it is not too early to measure the indices of failure going by the current trajectory. He stated that the masses were the losers because Nigerians who were once buying fuel at around 187 naira per litre now have to do so at the rate of 700 naira per litre. Joe Ajero says the masses were suffering because there is no improvement in wages for Nigerian workers. I have, we have seen a lot of Tinubu's uh, economic policies. 
mainly driven by the British world institutions, World Bank and IMF. Almost all. Whether you are talking of subsidy removal or privatization, those are the instructions that are coming from the World Bank and IMF. Two months ago, we had it rough with the World Bank telling them to increase the pump price of petroleum uh, products further. Now they are talking of privatization. 99%, if not 100% of companies privatized in the country have disappeared. They have failed. And then we are sustaining it. If you read the newspapers of yesterday, you hear of five companies in the power sector that were built by over $5 billion, that they are bar selling for $1 billion. And these are policies. If you check even the pronouncement this year, you hear that they have budgeted $1.8 trillion as subsidy for the power sector. Meanwhile, the power sector was privatized at the cost of $400 billion. That was what they sold the then Nepal. And then you subsidize it with $1.8 trillion in a year. A personal business. You sold your house for $2 million, And you are giving the person $10 million to repair it. That is political economy. In other news, stakeholders in the education sector have called on governments at all levels to address the menace of insecurity across Nigeria in order to improve learning conditions among Nigerians, especially children. They made the call on the sidelines of this year's International Day of Education by the United Nations, which is marked on the 24th, on the 24th of January every year. Hamid Oyebade tells us more. The United Nations General Assembly proclaimed 24th January as International Day of Education, given the role of education in achieving peace and development. Meanwhile, the Sustainable Development Go4 focuses on quality education to ensure that every child, adolescent and adult has the opportunity to acquire knowledge and skills needed for a life of dignity and purpose. But this might just be a mirage unless government put necessary measures in place to ensure safety of learners in schools across the country. Government should provide adequate security for the students, clearing of bushes, fencing the school premises so that to make the school a better place to study. We want government to provide adequate security so that students will not be afraid of going to schools. The national president of National Association of Proprietors of Private Schools of Nigeria, Yomi Otubela, harped on the need for synergy between security agencies and proprietors of both public and private schools in Nigeria to make schools safe and secured. So we had asked all these schools to register their school with this uh, police station and form a relationship where they could share intelligence with the police from time to time, exchange phone numbers of uh, key officers of these police stations and police posts. We also invite, we invited uh, security officers to speak and enlighten our members. Uh, I should say government has put uh, various uh, activities in place to ensure that our schools are safe. Um, part of the uh, measures that we put in place is the presence of a peace corps in our schools with the theme learning for lasting peace nations commemorate the international day of education and work to attain sdg4 in order to guarantee a better future for the next generation amid Oyegbade, trust tv news Oshobo. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Yemi Kadoso, has declared that the Nigerian Naira is undervalued while promising to expedite the discovery of genuine price in the near future. The CBN governor, who spoke at the 2024 Macroeconomic Outlook of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group on Wednesday, also says the Apex Bank is looking at an inflation rate of 21.4% under its inflation targeting regime. 
the adoption of inflation targeting uh, framework, according to the CBN boss, involves clear communication, use of monetary policy instruments, and collaboration with fiscal authorities to achieve price stability and positively influence consumer behavior. He maintains that the declining inflation will have a great impact on businesses, providing a more predictable cost environment and potentially leading to lower policy rates, stimulating investment, stimulating growth and creating job opportunities. Let's take a look at developments on the international scene. The death toll from last week's accident at an artisanal gold mine in southwest Mali has risen to more than 70, according to state radio. The deaths were caused after a shaft collapsed on Friday inside an artisanal gold mining site in the Kangaba Circle in Mali's southwestern Kulikoro region. The mines ministry reported over 40 persons killed on Wednesday but says the figure was provisional. State radio following a government de delegation dispatched to the area on Thursday says the death toll had risen to over 70 including a woman. Fierce battles are tearing through the Gaza Strip's second largest city, Khan Yunis, where United Nations officials say tanks, uh, tank rounds have hit a UN facility sheltering displaced Palestinians on Wednesday, killing at least nine people and wounding 75 others. The White House has condemned Wednesday's deadly shelling of a UN shelter in southern Gaza, reiterating its position that Israel has, quote, a responsibility to protect civilians as it prosecutes its war against Hamas. Qatar says Wednesday it was appalled by reports attributed to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who was allegedly caught on tape calling the Emiratis' role as mediator in the Gaza war problematic. Now, the health ministry in Hamas-run Gaza says at least 25,700 people have so far been killed, most of them women and children, and 63,740 have been injured in Israel's Israeli strikes on the enclave since October 7. Israeli officials say 1,139 people were killed in the Hamas-led October 7 attack in southern Israel. Militant fighters took some 240 hostages during the attack and 136 are still in Gaza, according to Israeli figures. Now, the Israeli military says 217 soldiers have been killed in the Gaza Strip since the start of the ground operations in the Palestinian territory. Let's talk sports now. Cameroonian uh, indomitable Lions of Cameroon captain Vincent Abubakar and winger Clinton Njaye are back in full training ahead of the indomitable Lions meeting with Nigeria's Super Eagles. Abubakar and Njaye are yet to make an appearance for the former champions of the ongoing 2023 Africa Cup of Nations as they have been recovering from injuries. The duo trained with their teammates in the in Bwaki on Wednesday uh, without any difficulties. Rogabat Song's side is expected to storm Abidjan on Thursday ahead of the highly anticipated round of 16 clash with their eternal rivals, the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Saturday's encounter is slated for the Felix uh, Hupet Bueni Stadium in Abidjan. Uh, Cameroon finished second in Group C behind holders, Taranga Lions of Senegal. And the Super Eagles also came in second place in the group behind Equatorial Guinea. The winner will face either Angola or Namibia in the quarterfinals. Well, that's it. You're up to date with the latest news stories at this hour. Thank you most kindly for joining us. As always, follow us across our social media platforms to stay in touch with our content. And you can visit our website, trusttv.com, for the latest. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. Thank you for your time.